The name Hans Munch is familiar to many people all over the world. This man was a doctor in the Auschwitz concentration camp and became the only person who was acquitted in court in 1947. He refused to take part in the mass extermination of people, even former prisoners testified in his favor. Because of this, he was called a kind man from Auschwitz. However, years later, he forced himself to talk about himself again, and this time the reviews about him were not so unambiguous. In his youth, Hans Munch was fascinated by two things, medicine, which he studied at university, and the ideas of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, which were then actively popularized among students. Hans Munch was one of the most ardent activists of the National Socialist Union of Students of Germany. He himself organized propaganda lectures and attracted his peers there. After receiving a degree in biology in 1937, Hans Munch joined the party, and a couple of years later he headed the bacteriological department at the university hospital. When the Second World War began, he was eager to go to the front. At first, he was denied this, scientists could do a lot in the rear, but in 1943 his plan still came true. Later he explained, I was eager to go to war because I believed in propaganda. I often went to Munich, asked, but all to no avail, until I met a school friend who held a great post, who gave recommendations for my entry into the SS. They immediately told me to get ready to go near Krakow. No one said anything about the concentration camp. Of course, I heard that they exist, but I was completely unprepared for what I would see in Auschwitz. Nazi doctors carried out cruel experiments on prisoners of the Auschwitz concentration camp. The most monstrous experiments on humans were performed by the Dr. Joseph Menjo, who was called one of the most dangerous Nazis. He specialized in genetics and developmental abnormalities. Most of Joseph Menjo's patients disappeared without a trace, they were initially doomed. The only thing they could hope for was a reprieve from death. And Hans Munch helped them in this. Hans Munch's duties included the inspection and sorting of newly arrived concentration camp prisoners, those who were of interest for medical research were left, and everyone else was immediately sent to the gas chambers. According to Hans Munch, he evaded this duty, referring to the narrow profile of his activities. I periodically visited the camp itself, but my main work was in the laboratory, he said at the trial. However, Hans Munch participated in the experiments on concentration camp prisoners under the guidance of Menjo. In his defense, he said that he chose the least harmful experiments to the body and also deliberately delayed their conduct, ostensibly in order to delay the last hour of the prisoners. According to the testimony of the surviving prisoners, Hans Munch conducted fake experiments trying to save people. He knew that the waste material and people useless for research would be immediately sent to the gas chambers, and he prevented this. Hans Munch really worked together with Joseph Menger, doing bacteriological research, studying malaria and rheumatism, and at the same time they deliberately infected people and monitored the reactions of the body. However, Hans Munch used numerous tricks to prolong the life of prisoners. For this, he was later nicknamed the Good Man from Auschwitz. After the end of the war, Hans Munch was arrested and taken to Poland, where he was put on trial. At the first Auschwitz trial, he became the only one of the 40 who appeared before the court who was fully acquitted thanks to the testimony of former concentration camp prisoners who testified in his favor. These people said they owed him their lives, and that saved him. The verdict stated, the defendant treated the prisoners favorably, thereby exposing himself to danger. The press immediately started talking about a good man from Auschwitz, 
Hans Munch returned to medical practice in Germany. And in 1964, he attended the second Auschwitz trial as an expert and again spoke about the barbaric and inhumane medical experiments of the Nazis. However, a few years after the trial, Hans Munch called Joseph Menger the most sympathetic and wonderful of all colleagues and comrades in life. And then he confessed that he had participated in the selection of prisoners for the study of rheumatism, adding that it was his initiative. At the same time, we reviewed the Polish materials of the trial of Hans Munch and found out that most of the witnesses who testified in his favor did not actually encounter him in the concentration camp. Later, the motives of their behavior were explained by the Stockholm Syndrome. Sometimes victims justify their tormentors, who showed them at least minimal sympathy and leniency. After that, the odious doctor made one contradictory statement after another, and they were all in support of the ideology of the Nazis. In 1999, in a French radio program, Hans Munch said that some ethnic groups are so pathetic that gas chambers are the only right solution for them. As a result, he was found guilty in France of inciting racial hatred. However, this time he was able to escape punishment due to his advanced age and the conclusion of a medical examination that recognized him as mentally unstable. Munch's relatives claimed that in his declining years he suffered from Alzheimer's disease and could not be held responsible for his words. At the trial, it was admitted that he was not in his right mind. But for many it was not an argument. The fact is that this disease affects those parts of the brain that are responsible for self-control. And as a result, a person demonstrates what he has been suppressing in himself for many years and trying to hide. Hence the questions arose, was the doctor's remorse sincere or are there really no former Nazis? In 2001, Hans Munch passed away, leaving many questions and doubts about his real attitude to the ideology of the Nazis. His example was another confirmation of the fact that historical events are often very difficult to give an unambiguous assessment. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Please like and subscribe to my channel.